All right, we are here today with Evan Barry of Wild Run. How are you doing, Evan? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Uh, all things considered, I'm doing quite well. It's the D.C. area here for us, so trying to come in from where we come. Last night, I'm still reeling from Cap's opening night, so I didn't get to bed till late because my heart was fucking pumping uh, <laughs> as hockey re- returned last night. Evan, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're from Boston area, right? Actually, uh, I, I currently live in Chicago. Um, we kind of, uh, we kind of, we uh, World Run formed in Boston. Okay. That's kind of like our, our home base. But now we uh, we kind of live a uh, spread across the country, and uh, we we usually don't, you know, we don't really. A lot of people don't know that because we don't post too much about where we're all. Yeah, where you guys are all living, living and stuff like and that. All that. Um, I mean, not that I have any problem with <laughs> saying it now, but uh, yeah. But I am. I'm currently in Chicago, actually, which is a mortal bird country. Yes, exactly, mm-hmm. and um, uh, and yeah, and everyone else. The the only member of the band that's actually currently in Boston is our bassist Dan, um, and everyone else is kind of spread out. So, but again, yeah. uh, but he could live in Zimbabwe. He, he's a bassist. Okay. Yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> now, but hey, uh, speaking of hockey, it's a shame you you moved away from uh, a. Uh, Stanley Cup team just to get such a crappy team where you live now. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> you a uh, Boston Bruins fan? Um, or a hockey I, fan at or all? Or a hockey fan at all? Most guys we talk to are like, yeah, I don't, you know, they tour so much or whatever, you know, they're like, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm definitely kind of in that, in that field, although I, I would certainly call myself a, uh, a fair weather fan of, of the Blackhawks. Okay. But I, I, well, I wouldn't pretend to, to know too much about it. But you know what? Weather, well, I'll just tell you one thing. The weather's always pretty fair over there, dude. So you don't <laughs> yeah, have to worry yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. There yeah. is nothing wrong with throwing on a Blackhawk shirt, grabbing a couple beers, and celebrating the Stanley Cup victory, okay? There's <laughs> every other yeah, exactly. There's nothing wrong with that at all. No hey, shame. No shame. Be- before we go any further, it sounded to me like I did not pronounce the band's name correctly. Is that the case? Um. Well, we we usually call it, uh, Wilderen. That's how. That's how we pronounce. That's it. That's how I do it. For I once, it. I was right. Yeah, see, I, yes. I, I, I haven't. You know, when you don't hear somebody else say it, you just kind of go with your best guess. And oh yeah, no, I totally understand. We, we, and we usually, I would say, it's kind of fifty-fifty with how people decide to pronounce it. Um, it's either Wild Run or Wilderen. Um, some people say Wilder Run. <laughs> Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of other ones that I can't even comprehend. So, well, we're really big on totally pronunciation here. So, yeah. <laughs> Wilder Run is it? That's, that's right. That's how we like to say yeah. it. Yeah, Wilder <laughs> Run. That's the that's the <laughs> Zach Wild led project. Right, right. <laughs> okay, Wilder Run it is. Well, that's okay because Evan, we met in Baltimore the last time you guys were there, uh, or you were there with Immortal Bird. Oh yes, of course. And yeah. I was the guy who came up and the the first two questions where I said the name wrong. And then I asked, well, when are you coming back? And I'm like, but they haven't even played yet tonight. So <laughs> right, yeah. you got more, I think you got more questions about Will to run that night than about a mortal bird. So, yep. so Evan, let me, let me bring you up the speed, how uh, you guys came on our radar here. Uh, we do this podcast semi-regular, I'd say a couple of times a month when yeah. you know, our lives allow us to. And uh, this year, for the first time, we did a mid-year list of uh, our best albums of the year. Now, prior to that time, John and I had talked on Twitter and Facebook and exchanged some messages back and forth, but had not met in person. We sat down for that mid-year list, and, you know, in the metal world, you like to have lists. Mm -hmm. And we hold those lists pretty sacred. sacred. We did, like, what, top 15, was it? I think it was 10. 10? But, you know, I had some drinks, so I think it turned out to be, like, 13, 14 (laughs) for me. I think you got lost at (laughs) 6. Yeah. Yeah. But but it gets to our number one, and John and I, who hadn't even mentioned it, both shared uh, your guy's album as our number one album of the year so far, (laughs) Sleep at the Edge of the Earth. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. And I said, I had teased it when I started doing my list, and John kind of, you know, bright eyed looked at me like, hmm. They were like, it has a mountainside <laughs> on it. It's green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's when him and I really, our friendship Blossomed. really exploded. And these, Jay and George, I could kick them off the pod. <laughs> <laughs> so I am, where I was going with all this is, is that, 
John and I love the album. I have seen. So do I. Uh, and George, we're is, all you know, we, we're it, all yeah. fans. Thank uh, you so much. Thank this you. is when you guys, you know, popped up on my radar. Are you starting to see worldwide reception of this album, and a lot of people coming on board and loving it, like we are now? Definitely more. Yeah, uh, I think this album. I mean, you know, we definitely have had some some good fans that have you know been with us since since we released the first album and. Uh, 2012 but i would say that yeah this this new album just because of you know getting a little bit more press a little bit more reviews and stuff like that uh because of that we've definitely gained a good a good deal more fans um and yeah from from all across the world uh you know i i ship out all the merchandise and all the cds myself and and it's kind of cool to see you know orders come in from you know, God knows where, just the most random countries. And I'm, I'm seeing more of that now, now that the new albums come out. So it's, it's really cool. Yeah. And it's really, uh, yeah, we're just, we're really honored that, you know, anyone <laughs> really and, likes, and likes you, us that much. It's, so. <laughs> it's pretty cool that, you know, John and I had it on our list, but when you started researching more, John, you and I weren't alone in that. No, they've been popping up on a lot of best of lists I've, so far. I think I've gone through maybe six, seven, eight different sites, and just nothing but praise. Yeah, and, and all for different reasons, which I thought was even better. It wasn't just for for one thing. It was because I think the album's pretty multifaceted. I think there's a lot going on. There's a lot of layers to it. For it's me, like it's like an ogre. <laughs> <laughs> so it's layers. I, yeah. So I. I it just seems like a lot of people from a lot of different places are liking it for a lot of reasons. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been encountering the same thing, and I was wondering, given all this, you know, seemingly positive. Well, I mean, lots of positive attention. Uh, have there been any labels sniffing around your door, uh, looking to possibly, you know, reissue it uh, under the label? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. No, we haven't really really gotten anything in. Um, back uh, when we released the first album, we uh, we we had a whole you know, set of time where we were just sending out press kits and, and copies of the album to labels that we thought might be interested in. And we never really heard back. So uh, we, we, we might try to do the same thing for this record. Uh, we, have, we honestly just really haven't had a chance yet to, you know, because it, it's a big process to, to really put together physical yeah. Yeah. press kits and I, ship I gotta them tell out you, to all the is, addresses. That, that answer is, it just reaffirms my belief that Record labels suck. <laughs> you know, they don't know what's going on. If if an album of this magnitude, and I, I don't mean to, you know, blow smoke up your butt or anything, but <laughs> it, it is a really uh, pretty fabulous album. And mm-hmm. for it to be, it, the, the like the A&R people out there are not picking up on this and at least asking some questions, then they're not doing their job. It's, it's tough. It's, I mean, it's tough to know, you know, exactly what, what anyone's looking for as far as labels go. I mean, it's a, it's definitely a new industry than it used to be. It's the whole music business is really yeah. changing. So it's, it's hard to know. I mean, there's so much oversaturation in the industry with bands. And that, now that, now that it's all, you know, DIY with band camp and everything, there's just so many bands that oh. everyone knows about that. It, it's, I guess it's hard to know if anyone's even heard us. Like, yeah. you know, and that's, it, that's it, the question I was going to ask him. He has been a part of, of two probably you would say the best albums of the year and mentioning immortal bird that album probably you wonder how many metalheads have even heard that album and yeah. that is on a label right uh it's on yeah i believe it's on a, a broken limbs recording yeah um and uh yeah so i i sometimes i have a hard time with immortal bird questions because uh ray kind of handles all the yeah. Yeah. all the business side of that like i'm very much just like as opposed to Wilderun, where I, where I kind of handled the business for Wilderun, um, Immortal Bird is, I'm very much just there musically. And because you know, let's kind of admit, let she, she's stuff, a badass, so. and she can probably yeah. kick all our ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, we're working on getting her, her on here, too. We've been talking to her, but, uh, you know, with the tour and everything, she's been kind of busy. Absolutely. I, I, I got a question I'm going to sneak in here, because you're talking about, well, uh, recording the album and that kind of thing, which is one of the th- First of all, it's great, as everybody says, but it also sounds great, dude. So I would like to know if you recorded it at home, did you record it in a studio, what'd you do? We recorded it at, uh, it's called More Sound Studios uh, in Syracuse, New York. 
And that's where we've recorded both the albums. Uh, and the engineer, his name is Jocko, uh, well, Jason Randall, but he goes by Jocko. And he's just a absolutely fantastic engineer, producer, mixer, pretty much everything. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a mid-sized studio. It's not, you know, they're not uh, a huge studio yet. I, but, um, yeah, we, we heard about the studio, I think, back in 2011 from our friends. And there's a metal band from Syracuse called Freya. And, uh, and we're good friends with those guys. And they showed me and a couple friends around the studio back in 2011. And we just, we just loved it. We loved uh, talking with Jocko and all of the work he had done. So we kind of just took a gamble and decided to record the first album there just to, because we didn't really, you know, we just thought it might be a good bet. And we loved it. And then when the second album came around, we thought, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So... It was, uh, you know, we've, we've been really happy working with him so far. And to anyone out there listening, if you're in at all upstate New York area or basically anywhere in the country, definitely look into more sound studios because it's a phenomenal facility. So cool. Yeah, Jay, I, I, I'm glad you asked that because I don't know about you guys, but I listen to this out, al- both albums. And I saw there's times I feel like just saying, Fuck it, man! I'm grabbing my sword and I'm going. I'm going on this fucking journey. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's the sound. It just, yeah, it's a real full sound and it's so yes, clean, yeah. but it yes. doesn't sound processed. Yeah, no. you know, and it just I'm around. Yo, I'm on. John, the, it's I'm, it's funny you mention it. We we find a lot, and all four of us find a lot of our music on Bandcamp. And Bandcamp is good because anybody can. You know, I don't know how many hoops you have to go through, but anybody can put their stuff Not out many. there. And I would, and with that, you know, you listen to so much on Bandcamp. You're like, oh, the album art looks cool on this. Within seconds, you want to throw your headphones against the wall, hope that you can never hear music out of those headphones again. <laughs> for but, some bands, yeah, is what for you're some saying. bands. But the instant I put you guys on, that full sound yeah. Yeah. just washes Fuck. over you, and you're like, instant, instant. I'm like- you know what I want to say was about it? It's, to me, it sounds like you're already on a label because it just sounds like there's money yeah. in that recording. Yeah, you know? great. Like it's so exemplary. So anyway, you know, Thank I just you. hats off the, on that. The, yeah, the fu- it's uh, it's definitely, I mean, the production is definitely a big element for us and we've always really valued that from the beginning of the band. Like we just, we, we didn't, we wanted to make sure that the first thing that we released, we wanted to skip the uh, skip the demo phase, you know? We didn't want any of that because we, we, we kind of figured that... For so many people listening to bands like this, the first thing they hear is going to really be their impression of the band forever. So we want to make sure that no matter what anyone out there hears, no matter what the first thing they hear is, it's going to be full quality. Like no, no demos out there, just only full quality recordings. So that, cool. was, that was always really important to us. Excellent. It um, obviously worked with us, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> so that's a good theory you've got. There we go, yeah. Comparing the two albums, the first album, a lot of the folky elements were more like uh, you would dance a jig to, you know, Mm -hmm. something that was a little more grab a beer and and swing the lass around. And, you know, and whereas on the on the, the second album, the folk elements are a bit more like romantic, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, not, not as, uh, energetic, Right. Um, There's more of an ethereal feel, I think, throughout the album. Yeah, atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a question in here that I was getting to, which was: we usually ask people what their influences were, but I'm I'm kind of curious as to what music outside of metal sort of influences or inspires you to do, you know, the non-metal elements of the music. Well, lots of stuff. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of like just traditional folk music, um, Celtic folk music. American folk music, of course. Um, just anything, you know, anything that has a lot of, uh, you know, traditional elements, you know. I, we we obviously love old antique instrumentation and, and stuff like that. So, uh, but as far as, I mean, we, we all listen to a, a variety of music that's outside of metal. Um, it's it's kind of hard to say. It's hard to say what directly influences what we do because we never, whenever we're recording or arranging, we're never like, oh, let's have this section sound like this band or anything like that. We just want to make sure it just sounds like Wilderun. Right. But I'm sure that our various influences kind of more subconsciously 
seep their way into what we're doing um i mean i'm trying to think of some some artists in particular no, evan, uh, evan it's uh, it's like it's kind of i could see do you shrug off whenever you may read a review or may hear a comment from somebody which again this is not a negative but like people may say oh i hear like an opeth sound from them because you're like no we're not trying to be like opeth we're just trying to be will run yeah i mean i I, I don't have any problem with people making their comparisons because, like, I mean, because you know, it's the year. Tw- there's been thousands of years of music now. You know, re- yeah. recorded music's been around for decades now. You're not going to go out there and really do something that hasn't been laid down somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. And like, and w- we're definitely not at all ashamed of any of our influences. I mean, we all love Opeth, and there's, I mean. I'm not going to deny that. I love that band. You yes, know, and, that's, and that's were, John and I's favorite group. Yeah, yeah, they're and they're amazing, and they definitely they, they were definitely one of the kind of the first groups that really had a important part in my musical life. And, and your yeah, favorite op- like, you have a favorite album nine. by them. Favorite album? Um, that's I feel like with Opeth, it's always changing. Um, I mean, I probably have to say Blackwater Park, but there you um, go. It, it, Kind of flip flops depending on the month or something. <laughs> that's my that's my favorite without a question, man. That's yeah, if, always... I, if I yeah, gun to head, that's that's probably what I'd say. But uh, you know what? There is a gun to your head, bro. So you got to pick something. <laughs> well, that, that's interesting because some of the stuff that I hear, me personally, I might be opethian if you want to use, oh, make like up that, that word. Uh, it sounds like there's some morning rise a little bit because you guys will go through some very aggressive moments. And just slide right into a nice acoustic piece, and then you pull yeah. right back into it. And I kind of like how you do it. So that's just me. I can so. see that. Yeah. Opethian. Yes. Opethian. Yes. New word. <laughs> John, you have some questions, yeah, buddy? No, I mean I think we're all, we're. One thing I wanted to ask you that just <laughs> kind of as we're in this this current place right now is, do you find that being in, in both bands, do you find that you kind of when you're doing world runs, some of the immortal bird slides in because in a in a couple parts on on this album, I noticed like during um, the Garden of Fire, there's some guitar work in there. I swear you were playing something, same kind of aggressive play when I saw you play with Immortal Bird. So I wonder, does it does it ever blur at all, or is it just kind of come out that way? Is that just your style? I think that's it. I think it's probably the crossover is just like is kind of like the that style that just innate way of playing that you can't really deny that no matter no matter how much you try to change it up you're always going to have certain ways that you play and certain ways that you think about music that it's it's kind of hard to you know to deny those when you're when you're making music and and you know and I think that's I think that's okay you know that's just personal style but it, as far as Wilderun and Immortal Bird goes it's you know I just kind of get myself in a different mentality when working with either band just try to kind of put myself in a different mindset, you know, think about different things as far as atmosphere and energy goes. Yep. And, and right. then, and, and you know, the, the crossover is more just that kind of, yeah, that subconscious style that I'm not even really thinking about. That's, you know, that's always going to be there. No, and, well, I, and, you, and that's what I figured. It's just not to say that you're bringing immortal board into world run, but you, you do, you can tell when someone's style is there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm wondering too, I mean, do you get, I'm, I'm assuming you take a slightly more of a backseat in Immortal Bird, so I mean, you really get to just be a guitar player, right? I mean, instead of like having to steer the bus and everything. And absolutely, yeah, that, and that that that's been nice. I mean, I you know, and I I love Wilderun, and I love my position in Wilderun, but uh, it it would be pretty hard to imagine having to do that for more than one band, as far as yeah. fronting <laughs> it and dealing with so much of the business and uh, and just kind of having to. You know, it's it's a lot of yeah, it's I a lot imagine. of hours. So yeah, with Immortal Bird, it's nice. I mean, I I don't do too much live playing with them just because I'm um, you know I'm in, involved with Wilderun. And I'm I'm also actually involved with another band called Replicire, which is a, a Boston-based uh, death metal group. Oh and wow! I, and, I, and I do I do just vocals for them. Um, I, I'm not I'm mostly involved as far as the creation of the music goes. I'm mostly just involved with arranging with that band, but. I play live with them a decent amount and obviously with Wilderun. So with Immortal Bird, it's just like, you know, the third band I joined, I was kind of like, I, I don't know how much live playing I can actually handle right well, now. I'm glad, I'm glad I saw you guys a couple months ago then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, the, that was the first full tour I had done with the band 
before that, the only shows I had played were Chicago shows. So, I mean, it was great. It was fun. I had a, I had a good time. Um, but it's, it's more of just kind of a time commitment thing as far as my, my work goes and everything like that. But, uh, but yeah, but it, it was, it was nice being able to just kind of be on the side of the stage, like just focusing on my guitar playing. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to worry about simultaneously, you know, getting my voice ready and playing guitar and, you know, kind of being the, the front persona. So that was, that, that was definitely nice. It was nice for a change. Yep. Yeah. Cool. To, to, you just mentioned, you know, your death metal side band also. Mike, you know, of Opeth has come out a couple of times and said that the uh, harsh, growling death vocals that he does is boring. Somebody mm-hmm. like yourself who has that dynamic vocal range, could you see maybe what he's talking about? Do you enjoy that you do actually have the freedom to come out with Wilder Run and sing your clean vocals and sing nice before you go into the harsh stuff? Yeah, I mean, I I like the diversity. I like being able to do both just because it's it's dynamics. You know, it keeps it keeps things interesting. I Touch think contrast. Uh, yeah, exactly. I I I I definitely think I would have a hard time. In, in none of my bands do I just do the the harsh vocals, and I think I might personally have a bit of a hard time if that was the case. Because I mean, I love death metal. I love heavy music, but I. I really value dynamics and change. And, and that's what exactly. Mike seems to say, too. Yeah. Well, I, I question whether Mike really values dynamics since he's dropping the death vault. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, I just said that. And I, I am not that guy, but it's just that doesn't sit well with me. I need Opeth to go back to. No, they can do what they want, but you know what I mean. Okay, but now, Evan, though, do you, does, do you find death metal vocals as a singer challenging compared to being able to sing clean in the range that you can hit? singing clean because to me i think there's just death vocals and which and, one and which one requires more oxygen um it's i guess it's just kind of different um it's kind of like just a whole different way of doing things and a different way of thinking about your voice um it's kind it's kind of honestly awesome, kind of it's hard to compare really uh i mean obviously with with clean singing there is more range there's more diversity there's more things you can do at the end of the day i think but there is a lot of kind of there is diversity to, to growling because you know there's you know there's higher growling there's like higher screaming and lower growling there's like you know more pitched screaming and just you know completely you know no pitched screaming I don't know, there, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that so you know there if you're creative about it you can find ways of making mm-hmm. growling dynamic and it is difficult it's definitely uh it's definitely not just one thing um so but it's as far as breath goes i would say that yeah growling definitely if you're if you're full on growling it's going to definitely use up your breath a lot quicker <laughs> uh but the important thing with growling i think probably a lot of metal vocalists forget is that you need to still use the same techniques that you'd use just doing clean singing you need to be kind of singing from your diaphragm you need to make sure that you're not using your throat too much you got to make sure you warm up always you got to make sure that you you know use your proper technique or else you're going to blow out your voice the same as you would with clean singing if not sooner so <laughs> well i just can't help it i always want to giggle when i hear the word diaphragm sorry about that <laughs> oh no, no. It? Good hey um, hey bro i was going to ask you can we go back to the record for a second real quick and i wanted to ask you about um you know the multi-part song that we've got there or movement which is uh, tracks two through five and i was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the inspiration for that um well the inspiration for that it um well it was originally written as one song okay. um it was it was honestly like yeah it was just an 18 minute song when, when we first finished it and and we had like a lot of discussion about if we should just release it as one track or not um, but we kind of felt that uh, we kind of felt that like it really had four very distinct parts that like really had their own identity for each movement. So we felt that we wanted to split it up just so people listened to it that way. So they listened to it as a f- like they really thought about the four different parts on their own terms while understanding that it is one piece of music. Because um, if somebody you know you release an eighteen minute song and you know. Some t- some people might not have the patience for that, 
or just might think of the song a little bit differently. So, like Iron but, um, Empire of the Clouds. Oh, I do like <laughs> Black Rose Immortal, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, there's there's great songs like that, but I, we just felt for this song that it was just you know that the the four parts really had their own identity, but also worked as a whole. So that's why we wanted to do it like oh, that. Cool. Who took the picture for the cover? <laughs> that was actually. Uh, Dan, uh, the bassist, his his, uh, his sister took that in Austria, and uh, and it was kind of just an awesome random circumstance where uh, he was, uh, she was showing him some of the the photography she had taken out there, and and we saw that picture. And we were just like, wow, that's, I think that's it. Like we we have been we have been thinking about it, like thinking about a couple artists that might want to do the cover, but we didn't really have any distinct ideas about it we were just kind of like just vague ideas and we saw that and we were like wow like it just stuck out to us immediately and we were like i think we have to use that now so cool when it comes to songwriting i'm sure you you don't use like a formula but when it comes to writing a new song do you tend to start acoustically and then like you know bring in the metal parts later or would you you know write something heavy and then say okay now we got to put in some folk parts or i mean it's i would assume it's probably both ways but uh i was just curious as to if you had a method yeah i mean it is definitely uh different for every song um every yeah every every song kind of has like a different idea behind it like a different base at which it starts um and you can kind of you can kind of tell when listening to it like uh for example garden of fire was very much written on electric guitar and you can kind of tell because it's a very metal you know heavy kind of song and uh like linger and the track after that was started on an acoustic guitar obviously and that's why the song turned out that way um and then uh means to preserve actually the the last long song on the album that whole song was written on the piano. Nice. Oh, nice. So wow. that, and that, I think that's why that song has like a little bit of a different characteristic to it. Like the, the writing style of that song, just it has a different flavor. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it was written on the piano. Like the, because when you're looking at a different instrument, you are automatically going to be writing slightly differently just because of how the instrument is formed. And like with the piano, I always end up, uh, there's a song off of the first album called storm along. And that song is, was the other song written entirely on piano. And you can kind of tell with means to preserve and with storm along, um, just like the, the chord shapes are a bit different. Like the, the way that the, the, melodies are structured it's just has a slightly different flavor and and yeah it just kind of has to do with you know the tool that you're using you know what is presented in front of you when you sit down with a new instrument so cool evan when, when you go into writing some of these songs too i know you play mandolin do you go in there are you knowing in the back of your head this is a song that i'm gonna play that in or do you like oh, the song's missing mandolin that's it. <laughs> you know, we need oh. more mandolin and cowbell. I, yeah. I, feel like, I feel like it's probably been more the latter. I feel like well, as far as like the folk instrument stuff that we do um, with the mandolin or the dulcimer or the auto harp and stuff like that, it, it, it's usually more about once the song is finished, we want to figure out like colors that we want to put on top of it and ways Garnish. to just yeah just ways to like liven things up and just keep things different uh sonically and yeah i mean I, there's probably been a couple moments where you know as soon as the song was written we had a general idea like i know uh like when uh there's a song on the first album called the dying californian and the like the verse of that song i think as soon as it was ready to go we knew that we wanted that verse to be auto harp um, just because it just, I don't know, it just called for it pretty obviously. But um, cool. but yeah, but for any other, for most of the time, it's more of us just kind of sitting down being like, okay, here's the song. Let's think about this section. What instruments could we use over this one? And we just get like really nitty gritty about it, just kind of thinking about every section individually, like what colors would work here? What right like, and what instrument, you know, sounds the best with this melody that's already written. So... Yeah, you know, I like that. You know something, Joe? Go get your dulcimer. 
we're going to need it. <laughs> so, so Evan, that that makes that kind of brings me to this question, which is kind of the macro, the the beginning of the album when you guys started. Did you have the melody in mind that you wanted for this album? Because every song has that melody, and you guys just tweak it a little bit. You may we play it a little differently, a little slower, a little different in terms of the instruments used, but it's throughout the whole album, and that's what I like the most about the album. It's a theme. You keep yeah. coming back to it without it being bombastic or in your face the whole time. Because it just depends on what how the song's going. It's either up or down, depending on the volume. Was that is that how you guys started the album, or did it kind of just develop that way as you guys were working through it? Um, it's that the the very first melody that you hear was was definitely written a little bit later. Um, the 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 first song has like has two parts to it. There's kind of an A section and a B section. The the A section, the very first part of it, was written on its own, kind of later in the process. Because I kind of, when we kind of knew that we wanted to reprise it at the end and have like kind of a connecting between the beginning and the end, the B section of the first song, uh, it, you, there's a reprise of that section in the Means to Preserve, and that part was written first in the Means to Preserve, and then brought to the beginning later. So it's like kind of a lot of flip flopping, like it's a lot of. You know, when when the album is being created and the and the parts are being created, it's kind of a big mess, and and then we just kind of over time just figure out exactly where everything belongs and kind of just like you know just kind of like finishing a puzzle kind of thing. So it's uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely a bit random, and every song and every section kind of goes through a different process. It's not one way of doing things. So. Evan, playing this uh, genre, is it? present any complications playing live oh yeah oh so (laughs) so many um it's that's been like one of the biggest things is that live we definitely have to do a little bit of rearranging because obviously first of all we're only four people and there's many things happening at once on the record um but also we we do we use backing tracks um because we love to have the orchestral stuff there obviously and we'll we'll put some of the folk instruments into the backing tracks just to have that color there you guys can't hire a touring orchestra jesus oh yeah well yeah, also, <laughs> yeah that doesn't cost anything <laughs> that doesn't right? cost anything i thought you could rent them for dollar fifty just breaking in all the money <laughs> with folk metal yeah no, but uh, um, yeah. So I mean, there's certain things though that we have to kind of make some live decisions. Like you know, we have to take out certain things here or there. But it's we we don't really try to think of it as like taking out things or not doing things yeah. live. We just rearrange it to like fit the live setting. Definitely better. don't but feel yeah, like you're like tough. robbing anybody who comes out to see you guys. They're they're still going to see the full product. Right, you know, exactly. But, yeah, there might just be like you know certain things, like certain sections that sound a little different. Um, of course, you know that you're going to get those wild, with a world of run nuts who are going to be like, I saw it right there. It's different. I heard it. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if we've had anyone like point out the specific parts yet, but maybe they're maybe they're complaining behind our backs. But you uh, but it seems to work. It seems to work so far. You know, it's uh, it's. You know, we I think we figured out a system. So. Cool. Yeah, your your the live video on the site for Suncatcher sounds great. I think. Thank you, you. Knowing knowing you know you, you see only four guys or anything. Okay, they're they're not going to be able to play everything, <laughs> yeah. but it it sounds great. I mean, the, you still get both aspects and they both blend really well. Yeah, we just try to make sure that the band is tight. That you know, just the the core instruments of the the metal band are, are tight as we can make them. And then we, you know, just use the backing tracks to blend in all the other elements. So, wow, that's that's so freaking cool. One day, one day, we definitely would love to get some more live instruments on stage if we can, you know, afford to hire some more musicians, like get um, mandolin, dulcimer, and all that stuff. Oh, you know stage. who's you know who's deep in that stuff right now? Maybe a Richie Blackmore <laughs> appearance. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 one day, one day. Yeah. But yeah, then you'll yeah. lose your band to Richie, and then you'll be all over from there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This will be Richie Blackmore's going to run. Will to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, now, speak, speaking about also playing this kind of folky metal too, have, have you uh, been contacted from uh, any of the bands or fans from overseas who, where a lot of those pagan folky bands are really popular and. You know, are really successful over there. Have you played over there? 
We have not played over there, no. What we we'd love to, but we definitely have you know a, a lot of fans. I mean, I would say that like our fan base is definitely split, pr- probably about fifty fifty between the U.S. and uh, anywhere else, I suppose. Um, you know, at least like if I had to guess, like I'd say thirty percent, maybe forty percent of our fans are from Europe. So it's just you know, ob- yeah, obviously that scene is. That's that's where the scene is over there. See, but you um, know what though? You sing in English. You're ours. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's not like <laughs> okay. Fintroll. Yeah. I love well, a lot of those love, bands, but they don't sing English. And yeah. I just <laughs> love Fintroll. No idea what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I I think your sound's more American too. I don't I, I mm-hmm. don't hear some of the like um trying to think of a, I can't think of any bands right now, but there's there are some that, that come off just so big and you know, huge bombastic sound and, and you guys sound much to, to my liking, much better personally. I, I think it's a more even sound. Thank you. I mean, we we you know we we love you know all of those bands out there. Obviously, we've been influenced by a lot of other folk metal, pagan metal, whatever you want to call it, bands, and and we love all that stuff. And 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 just as with Opeth, as I was saying before, we definitely don't deny you know our influence from from bands like that. You know, it's all great stuff. But um, but you know, we, we try to whenever we can put our own flavor on it, make, make it our own, try to just, you know, even though we're influenced by bands like that, we don't want to copy it. We just want to try to, you know, make it something organic. And I think that's going to be the, like the goal of the band as we move forward is just like always trying to see what new stuff we can do and how to kind of, you know, confirm our, our identity as much as we can. So when, you guys release an album like this with uh, the success that it has. Is with you're so busy with uh, you know managing the band. Do you have time to even see that and kind of be man? Just, you know, because it's good to get that uh, accommodation. Yeah, that com- accommodation. Everyone, because yeah. so many people are quick to throw negatives, and it's good. You know, when you know, it's nice com- to hear nice things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we you know we definitely get a lot of like good like fan emails and stuff like that and um you know well i i, I know the question's kind of uh given but there are some bands who we've talked to are like yeah you know we just don't go online and you know we just we yeah. just don't really don't care what anybody says yeah, we don't, don't really care, care what people say you know we just yeah. do oh, our, uh, our our thing i mean i don't know like i you know i definitely love to hear it when when someone really enjoys our music i i, I just like to know that the thing that we've worked really hard on um yeah can just make make someone feel something good you know like you know someone a lot of people just say they'll listen to the record and it'll just you know make their day a little better or something and that's that's awesome that's that's like one of the main reasons why we do it i mean yeah we do it when when we're creating the music when we're writing it we do it for ourselves of course like we we're, we're we never go into the writing process or into the recording process thinking like oh what's What's everyone going to like? What are we, you know, we try not to worry about that in the creative process. But when it's all said and done, when the record's out there, yeah, I mean, we love it when, when people tell us that they're enjoying it and, and can express to us how it's like helped, you know, help them or, or something. Like that's, that's amazing. That's like, you know, you can't really ask for anything better than that. So you well, see the comments on Bandcamp and the word, I hope they're not throwing it around willy nilly. Masterpiece is used a lot. <laughs> I would totally agree. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I've yeah. personally I haven't heard any negative. like negative comments yeah. about it, which is kind of unusual in itself. I mean, I'm sure if I go on Blabbermouth, I can find find trolls that'll sure. that'll rip on anything. But uh, yeah. have have you heard anything negative, but in a in a you know constructive sort of way where you were like, oh. Yeah, you, maybe you got a point there, or, or I mean, have you even? You must have heard something negative. Yeah, come uh, on, read us one of your bad reviews. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just wondering if anybody is actually giving you know constructive criticism, or if it's all just good good reviews and trolls. <laughs> I I mean, I definitely think it's mostly that. I mean, I like I as far as constructive criticism goes, like I maybe got a couple things from more of my uh, like close friends and acquaintances that i would maybe talk to about it that would you know i you know and with, with close friends i'll be like hey just be brutally honest with me i want i don't want you to you know try to be you know nice about it or whatever and and at that point that i might get a couple 
criticisms about a couple things where, you know, some, sometimes with the production or, or things like that. But as far as like anything online, any like, I don't, I don't know if I've seen any like really like scathingly negative things, but I've seen like a, a few reviews that are kind of more like, you know, this is good, but this isn't anything new or this is kind of like more okay. run of the mill. And, and I could, and I could totally see like, you know, some people hearing some of the influences that we get and then, and then kind of thinking it maybe sounds a little too much like something else. But, but I feel like, you know, you kind of, you kind of get that for any, any record. But. Yeah. I think it's the difference between people who listen to the whole record intently and, and, and people who just put it on and go, okay, I got the opening riff here. Let's go to track. You know what I mean? Like seriously, there are people who review records like that online. It's the real shame of online. Right. Yeah. Run so, of the mill is about the last thing I would use to describe it. <laughs> I mean, I, as someone who reviews music and listens to just tons and tons and tons of music constantly, I run of the mill is definitely something I hear a lot. Mm-hmm. And you know what? What set both of these albums apart for me was that, e- even despite the fact that I've heard a lot of you know folk influenced metal, this does not sound like anybody and, else to me. And to go and to compliment John, you know what he said earlier. This is ours in a sense. This is American. Yeah. This is something that is that's nice. Yeah. It's, it's American. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it Fuck was yeah yeah this 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 is ours. This is made here in the states. Does that present a problem for you guys going forward if you were to try and tour more? Because other than like Winter Hymn, a lot of American folk bands. I can't really think of so many metal folk bands. Do you have a problem touring with <laughs> finding like yeah finding like minded bands to put together a package if you were to to tour? Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's definitely been like a little bit of a struggle so far. Um, Especially, you know, we because we we just book our own tours and stuff like that, and we you know we're very much doing the DIY thing. So whenever we come to a new city or we're trying to you know lock down a gig in a new city, like trying to find a put together a bill, it can be tough. I mean, we're we're okay with we're definitely totally okay with playing with bands that are different from us. We're not you know we don't want to make it like all the bands are the exact same. We like diversity, but you know it is nice to try to play with somewhat similar bands just because not only is it a nice theme for the show, but then you get some fans coming in that they'll probably have a better chance of liking you if they're there for another band that's kind of similar. But yeah, but in America it's, it's tough. Like there's, there's limited, you know, we play with a lot of, a lot of thrash bands, just a lot of death metal bands. And and that's great. I mean, I love that stuff, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to find, yeah, a lot of similar bands. We, yeah. That's why uh, the, we've done a couple tours with our friends of the band Aether Realm from North Carolina. I love those they're, guys. Yeah, and they're they're folky kind mm-hmm. of melodic death, what what have you. So I think you know, I mean, it's like definitely not like Marthish. The, yeah, it's not, and it's not like you know they're not that similar to us, but it's it's in like a similar vein of kind of more epic metal, yeah. whatever, so that it, that it works out for shows. And and we're just all great friends, so it's it's been it's been awesome. I, I actually read something somewhere recently, or maybe I heard it on, on another podcast or something, but uh, somebody was talking about how one of the problems with the metal scene in America is that people feel they have to do this. They have to lump like bands together. So it's a death metal show, or it's a black metal show, or it's a folk metal show. Whereas in Europe, like with Vakken and, and all these other festivals, it, you run the gamut, you know. And you go from Water Run to Vital re- Remains. Yeah and, and, yeah, and and for Europeans, it's just like they they like it all. Whereas here, the American kids are so uh, you know compartmentalized into I like only black metal. I can only go to a show if it's all black metal bands, and right. and and I think that's a problem here. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I, that's why we try to like you know. It's a great point, guys. Yeah, we try to make some make some shows with some diverse lineups whenever we can as long as like the the bands are are quality you know the 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 genre is is a little less relevant than just the quality of the band like that's that's really the most important thing because if you're preaching to the choir that it's all folk metal fans you're not making any new fans they already know about you but if you're playing to on a bill with a death metal band and a black metal band and a thrash metal band you might pick up some new fans that were like oh yeah i didn't heard of these guys before point so We've had, we've had a couple people like that too like it's with this new album especially like we we've had like a good a good handful of people who have like who come to us and they're like you know what I don't really like this style of music but but 
you know this this album's cool because I, I feel like it, right. I don't know, it doesn't kind of you know it, at least from what people have have told us like it doesn't quite fall into that genre as prominently as like other other albums do so some some people are a little more open to it so that's so cool well i'll, I'll tell cool. you if there's a festival i'd love to see you guys at i see george smiling i'd love to see you guys play at prog power i i go down to that every single year in atlanta and oh, yeah. i think there's enough fans from those two kind of camps and then all the in-betweens and the stragglers that go to that i think you guys would go over really well there yeah and as a matter of fact yeah. I saw two people with shirts on, which surprised me. And I stopped a guy, and he just was like emphatic. Oh, man, it's my favorite band right now. And he was shocked that there was another World of Run fan at Prog Power. That's awesome. They were wow. wearing your shirts at Prog Power. Yeah, that's so, fucking cool, man. That's, that's, always, that's always where it starts. You know, it's the, the problem for that festival is Glenn gets hit up with like a billion bands every you know festival for who's going to play. So, But I'd love to see you guys. And it's a nice big stage. You get yeah, to play I mean, in front of a thousand people. Who knows what can happen that night? And you might even be able to borrow, you know, uh, uh, some uh, folk uh, people from some of the other bands to play extra ins- instruments. Yeah, yeah, they can come on stage. I mean, we we would we would absolutely love to play that. I mean, you know, as with as with anything, it's it's always hard to know exactly how you go about booking something like that. I mean, we don't have. You know, I I'm the band manager and the band and, manager, know, we don't really the merchandiser. Have he's the, <laughs> yeah, he's we the don't really have much like you know much help with that. So uh, I mean, you know, but you know, hey, maybe I'll shoot him an email. See if yeah, see he, if something happens. John, you know him, don't you? Can you I, uh, I don't bend him, bend his ear a little. I don't know Glenn, <laughs> but I you know, and it's funny because I bend. This will be the 16th of the 17th I've had that I'm going to, <laughs> and I had tickets for the one I missed. So, but. Uh, yeah, I, I guess a lot of times people just send him stuff directly, and I don't know. I don't know how he sorts through all of it. I mean, you talk about how much stuff you reviewed, George. How much stuff mm-hmm. the rest of us listen to, and I, I'm sure it's tenfold for him. So. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm assuming you have a full full time job. Uh, mm-hmm. Does that also? Because I'm always amazed that you know, to us, you can release an album that is so grand to us, and we think, man, you know, these guys aren't living off of this you know yeah. uh but that's oh, yeah. the reality and all my friends who i talk to who you know i'm the only metalhead at, at my job uh they're kind of amazed or like you know these guys have jobs does that kind of also i'm assuming it does affect how much time you can give to will to run and do you think maybe if you were to uh say fuck it and just live in that van down by the river <laughs> then, then maybe you could uh, uh tour more or something like like that yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's a constant struggle, and it's always kind of the internal battle of of uh, you know making a living versus making art. Yeah, and I, I think I think anyone in this industry, anyone in art at all, you know, music or otherwise, has to deal with this struggle um, of just yeah, you got to make a living, you got to you got to make money somehow, yep. and uh, and yeah, Wilderun is 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 absolutely not a. A, a thing that is you know that we can live off of at, at the at the present moment but you, you just gotta like you gotta love it enough to put in that extra time to maybe lose a little bit of sleep every now and then and maybe you know not go out and do normal social stuff if you need to you know <laughs> sit you know sit at home and write a song for a few hours you know you just gotta yeah. you gotta kind of make that choice you know it's 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 definitely a little bit of a time dedication uh but we love doing it and we couldn't imagine not doing it regardless of how, you know, how tough it can be regarding normal life. So, um, and then it also becomes the question of, you know, do you try to market it in a way where it could eventually become lucrative? But you know, that, that becomes a tough question because then you got to start questioning if you need to change the actual music and the, and the art in order to make it more, you know, financially sus- sustainable, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's that's a that's a big internal battle right there. So, <laughs> uh, a couple more, and then we'll let you get on with your day. Uh, your guys' promo pictures, I love the fucking look you you have in them. Oh, thanks. Damn, what what a fancy man you guys are when you get all dressed <laughs> up and you're, you know, you guys, the guys look wonderful. I love it. Do you guys keep that same look up when you guys play live shows? Yeah, we try to, I mean, we, we don't have like one set, you know, outfit that we wear every single show. Yeah. Like we, we've changed it up a little bit, but we always just try to stay in that theme. We like to kind of, you know, 
dress up a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and it, you know, we we just try to have have our attire be a theme and a vibe. So you now know, the but, the theme of a lot of songs go over my dense fucking head. What would you? For people who haven't heard you guys, the uh, theme and the lyrics of a lot of your guys' songs are about. Um, there's definitely not really one theme. Um, I mean, both both albums kind of have their own identity. Um, the first album w- was very much just about, uh, you know, we just, the whole theme of the album, I guess, was just folklore and just like American folklore and folk tales because, you know, like half those songs had actual traditional melodies in the, uh, in them. Uh, like, you know, How Stands the Glass Around, Dying California, and those are traditional American folk songs. So that was kind of the theme of that record, was we just kind of wanted to have it be just old folk tales, you know, some of them a little bit more lighthearted than others. Um, and then this new album was much more uh, intimate, a lot more personal. Like, we wanted to we wanted to maintain that atmosphere, that kind of folky, old-world atmosphere, but um, but have it be more of... A personal, intimate uh, story that dealt with, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's not as much of like a literal tale as much of it. It's more of like an emotional tale that, you know, kind of, yeah, paints a picture that way as opposed to a more like literal one. So, could you maybe spin this into like a concept album down the line? And yeah, any thoughts on that ever? Kind of, since you do have this f- f- American folk, maybe take like a character in American folklore. And Paul Bunyan, the album. And, you know what? It's <laughs> funny you say that. That's that's what I was thinking about in my head. But of course, my stupid babe, the no, blue, blue ox. It's, Evan, I have a one and a half year old. So when I was thinking like American folk, I'm like I'm thinking like Three Little Pigs or something. Johnny like Appleseed, that. right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we we've thought about it. We, I guess like it's just one of those things where if a if a really good idea comes to us, we'll go with it. Um, but we we don't want to force it. You know. Yeah. Um, but we're definitely open to it. We still love American folk music and stuff. Um, so yeah, you never know. We're, we're open to it, but we're, you know we won't do it unless it's uh, you know we're all really inspired mm-hmm. by the idea and it seems like a, a good thing to do. So yeah, too early to start talking about next album yet. Um, yeah, I mean it. I guess like there's not there's not much I could I have to say just because yeah. you know we have like. You know, we have like melodies and riffs lying around that we may or may not use, but that's pretty much the extent of it right now. Like, we don't have any really concrete ideas of what we want the next album to be yet. But I'm I'm excited to see what it's going to be because I even I don't really know yet. So <laughs> we'll see. Any any plans for touring? I, I know you guys are all spread out and jobs, but any anything possibly lined up? I know you, you did a re tour a little while ago yeah uh, well nothing nothing specific planned yet but we definitely want to tour next year like we'd, we'd like to do at least a couple tours next year uh hopefully earlier than later just to kind of you know we want to uh kind of ride off of some of the buzz that's been around the record and so so we we definitely want to hit the road sooner than later but where and exactly when i i really don't know yet but I'm telling you, know, you but keep, come keep december january wait till you see buzz Mm-hmm. When these guys, when everybody again looks for those final Year best of albums. lists, yeah, because those are where we get the most hits on our website oh, and the yeah. most downloads. Definitely, I'm telling you, you haven't seen Buzz yet. I'm, mark my word, these guys are going to be on numerous lists. And when you get out there, make sure to come DC or Baltimore. Absolutely, yeah, we'd love to. Any plans? Like the listeners of our podcast would crucify us if we didn't ask. Any vinyl plans? <laughs> uh we we've we've always thought about it and and we definitely want to do it eventually it's um you know it's expensive i yeah. think that's honestly been the main reason why we haven't done it yet and it's just uh we'd have to get like a different you always it if you want to do vinyl right you got to get it remastered for vinyl and stuff we want to make sure if we do vinyl we want to get a make it sound as good as we can and and, and print it for the highest quality that we can so uh we definitely want to um, and I would, I would say that we, there's a very good chance that we will eventually, but we just need to get yeah. the funds and the, and the right recording for oh, it. You ever so. want to do a test pressing? I, uh, <laughs> I got a nice record player and a nice home that would keep it, uh, you know, safe. And of nice. course you'll do both albums. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I will keep it in mind. Absolutely. Yeah. And Evan, you, you, when, the, if the time were to come, you know, sorry, was to come, you would press both albums, correct? Uh, I guess that just depends on 
uh, on our funds, really. I mean, and we, 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 we would love to do both. I mean, we'd probably have to start with one. Right. Just, uh, you know, yeah. just to, to test out to see how it sells and, and you know, just see I'm how just it curious because, you know, we don't do the band camp. You know, Jay's in a band. Jay's been up on band camp. Uh, George likes buying CDs and ripping flak files. How have the CD sales been? Are you still getting a large number of people buying the physical disc? A good amount, yeah. Um, cool. You know, kind of it kind of comes and goes in waves. Um, like you know, obviously when we released the record, we got like a a, a bunch of sales, and then it kind of died down a little bit. And then we got um we got a really good review from Angry Metal Guy, uh-huh. and yeah, I read he, that. Gave, I read he gave that. us a really nice review, and and that was cool because like so many people read that site that as soon as that was published, like that that whole week or like two weeks after that, we got like just a bunch of new orders, you know, just all for records and a couple shirts and stuff. So that was awesome. And, and now it's kind of tapering down a little bit now again, but we still get a few every week. And so it, it hasn't completely died yet. Well, it's still the middle well, another- podcast is going to make it fucking rain. We're going to drive it deep into a black hole. It's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we always do a Kickstarter to fund the, uh, the vinyl. Yes. I'm sure people would, would totally invest in that. I know I would. Yes. It, I'm telling you guys, if you were to do a Kickstarter for the vinyl, I'm in. without a doubt, you have four guys right here who yeah. buy in. I'm All telling right, you, yeah. is that anything you've ever thought of? Well, we we did the Kickstarter for the last record, so um, so and we definitely know it works. Although you know we we we, we do want to be a little bit careful as far as like how much we use that because it, it's a it's a great tool. Um, yeah, there's a local band here who does it every freaking time, and I'm I personally. George is in maybe in a different mindset. George says, "Hey, if you do it and it works and people keep buying into it, good." Well, but I say, "Hey, you've done it." You already have an established product. Maybe you don't need it for the fifth or sixth album. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't want to oversaturate and, you know, keep going back to the same well. Eventually, people are going to be like, nah, I'm done. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Which and I'm sure with- that, like, if we did a Kickstarter again, like, we'd be kind of yeah. banking off of some of the same people. And we don't want to, you know, we, we don't want to, like, put that, put that on the same people too many times in a row. Yeah. Like, you know, people have lives yeah. and expenses and stuff but, but at yeah. the same time it, it yeah. gives people the opportunity to get what they want in this case if there are fi- fans of vinyl you know it's not like they're put out they're actually getting something for it and sure. uh you know if if there isn't enough of demand then you know it, it doesn't it doesn't get funded and you know no harm no foul yeah but i think what evan point. is saying i think what evan is saying is your mom can only give so many times you know what <laughs> right, I mean? right 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 <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> but if there is a demand for that specific product, then yeah. you know it's not necessarily a bad thing. That's true. It's it's definitely something we're keeping in mind, and there's you know there's probably good, a good chance that we'll be using it again at some point for something. So Evan, yeah. just get just get us some vinyl. That's all we're saying. Dude. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what we're gonna say here, but we're, we're all over the map. But well, vinyl. it's good. It's good to know that like that. There's some definite people that that want yeah. it, and so it's good to know that it has some demand. So extremely, we'll definitely keep that in mind. I'd like to say I would like to suggest extremely limited edition four copies, one color <laughs> each. <laughs> Extre- yeah, yeah. Our, with our, our own color waves pressed on yeah, each of them, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Someone will get the pink one. Just get the <laughs> one. Yeah. I'll, I'll take the grass green one. <laughs> Okay, All right. Well, why don't we, uh, you know, go ahead and get into playing the first song, which is going to be "And So Opens the Earth," Ash Memory Part One. Now, I know you've already talked about this, uh, you know, the the four parts of the song a little bit, but do you want to talk about this a little bit uh, before we play it, or are you good? Um, I guess. Yeah, I would just. There's really nothing too specific I have to say. Just it's kind of the uh, yeah, it's the it's just the beginning of the journey. That's all I can say, really. Okay. Actually, that Simple. was pretty fucking deep. That though, was pretty it? deep yeah. right there. The, <laughs> the beginning of the yes. journey. And, and the album is a journey, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From start to finish. All right. Well, let's get into the song now.
just a fading song I pray to capture before its voice is gone Well, here we are at the end of today's episode, and as promised, we will be uh, playing another song from Wilderun. We have Evan with us still, and uh, before we get into that, though, Evan, is there anything you'd like to uh, pimp, talk about, or uh, you know, where can people get your stuff? Well, I always just you know advertise the Bandcamp page. Uh, you know, it's it's where most people hear our music. So, if anyone wants to check us out, it's just wilderun.bandcamp.com. We have you know digital copies physical copies of the of both records we got a couple t-shirts up there a couple new t-shirts that we just put up a few weeks ago from our most recent tour so yeah uh you know band camp is where to go and as far as any shows go no specific plans but you know if anyone's looking to see us in the u.s just keep an eye out for next year early next year we're going to be trying to play some shows so you know just stay tuned for that evan i'm sure you can see on the camera the three of us are pretty uh healthy Mm. Do you have uh, healthy sizes available on the band camp? <laughs> we have, right now we have small through 2XL. Uh, I'm fine. Of, that, of that most borderline. Of that, 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 so we, have a, we have an array. <laughs> See, because, yeah, so, you know, what, what George is trying to say is folk and prog fans are a little on the healthy side. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we need our 3X <laughs> or, or bigger. Yeah, we, we yeah we'll definitely uh, that's that's next next in the plan. <laughs> Either that, or I could just eat a few less cheeseburgers and get into a two X. But you know, no more. Uh, why, why should it be my fault? You know, uh, exactly. <laughs> Evan, I will 
say my my part in speaking for the rest of us. We love your album. Um, Thanks so much. Thank you. It, I don't know what could knock this off uh, my list for number one album of the year. So I really appreciate uh, the that. list is very fluid. It always changed all the time. You guys are probably locked in still. So um, thanks for coming on and joining us, John. Yeah, anything? I'm honored. Yeah, I I couldn't say it any better. I think that that's it's going to be hard. I love the album and uh, look more from you guys and hope uh, everything goes even better. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, so next up is the song The Garden of Fire. Uh, is there anything you can tell us about that before we play it? It's just a heavy fucking track. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we like to hear. That's what we like. Simple and brilliant. There you go. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. And here you go, everyone. This is The Garden of Fire.
sun will wake and will find intention and action are one. So don't despair if you can't find your mind. For tonight we drink together from the goblets of time. Ah!